Vinyl records have been making a comeback lately, but the records we know today wouldn't have been made if it weren't for Thomas Edison and his wax cylinder. Thomas Edison came up with the design for the wax cylinder phonograph because of his work on the telephone and telegraph. He wanted to transcribe telegraph messages by making indentations on paper, and he thought telephone messages could be recorded in a similar way. He started experimenting with paraffin paper, but soon switched to a metal cylinder wrapped in tin foil. There were two devices called diaphragms, which each held a needle. One was used for recording, and one was used for playback. Edison tested this machine by reciting nursery rhymes into a mouthpiece, which condensed the sound waves until they made contact with the diaphragm. This made the needle move up and down on the tin foil. Surprisingly, the tin foil was able to record Edison's voice and play it back. A patent was issued on Edison's tin foil phonograph in February of 1878. Edison stopped working on the phonograph and worked on other projects, but others were not satisfied with this version and wanted to improve it. Alexander Graham Bell, his cousin, and Charles Tainter began making changes to Edison's design, first by replacing the tin foil with a wax cylinder, then by changing the needle. They were awarded a patent in May of 1886. Bell and Tainter tried to partner with Edison and work together on the phonograph, but Edison was adamant about improving it on his own. He resumed working on the phonograph and producing wax cylinders. Although wax cylinders were better in sound quality than the tin foil cylinder, there were still some flaws. The cylinders were only four and a fourth inches long and two and three sixteenths inches in diameter. At 120 RPM, they only played for two minutes. In addition, there was no efficient way to re reproduce these cylinders for mass production. Edison tried to address the short playing time by making larger cylinders, but they didn't sell very well. He stuck with the two-minute cylinders, but made them easier to mass produce. Instead of the softer brown wax he had been using, Edison used a harder black wax, which was used to make a mold, which, one, which made 120 to 150 cylinders each day. These cylinders were known as gold-molded cylinders. Unfortunately, despite the, this improvement, the two-minute cylinders just couldn't compete with competitors' four-minute discs. Here is one of Edison's wax cylinder photographs playing Listen to the Mockingbird. Edison's chief chemist, Dr. Jonas Ellsworth, was concerned with the rising popularity of discs and began working on a model himself. When Edison found out, he gave his, it his personal attention. They wanted to make discs out of a plastic material that would be superior to the competitor's shellac records. Although the shellac records had a longer playing time than cylinders, they wore out pretty quickly and were prone to warping. To combat this, Ellsworth created a mixture of phenol, formaldehyde, wood flour, and a solvent that produced a heat-resistant material. This allowed the records to lay completely flat, which was important because if the disc warped, it would not play correctly. Another major difference between Edison's records and the others were the way they were cut. Edison's records were cut vertically, so the needle would bob up and down, while other records were cut lateral laterally, so the needle would move side to side. Edison's discs were 10 inches in diameter, weighed 10 ounces, and used a diamond-tipped stylus as the needle, which is why they are known as diamond discs. This made Edison's records incompatible with any record player other than the Edison disc phonograph. However, during World War I, the Army and Navy wanted phonographs, so Edison made an Army-Navy model, which was sold for $60. Then, during and after World War II, people began making records out of vinyl, which was a lighter, more cost-efficient, and resourceful material than shellac, and much thinner than Edison's records. These vinyl records were made in multiple different sizes, including the 33 and a third, the 45, and the 78. These numbers refer to the RPM the record is played at. Today, most of the records we play are 33 and a third. Now 
that you've heard the mockingbird, I'd like to give you the American thrush. <laughs> 